Hippos spend up to 16 hours a day in the water. They have no equals there. Neither lions nor crocodiles would risk attacking them. Knowing this, hippos started to give birth in the water to ensure maximum safety for their offspring. Everything would be fine if not for one detail. Hippos can't swim. What can one do in 40 seconds? Water the flowers, order food delivery, wash a mug that's been standing on the table the whole week, take a few selfies? And if you're a baby hippo, try not to die. As I've already said, hippos are born in the water because it's the safest option. But as soon as the baby is born, a timer starts. The baby can hold its breath for only 40 seconds, in rare cases for a minute. During that time, its mother must push it to the surface so that the little hippo can take a breath. Otherwise, well, you get the idea. The female continues to push its child out of the water over and over again to teach it the basic principle, breathe or you will die. After five minutes, the newborn is already able to stand on its feet, but it still can't swim. It'll take quite a lot of time before the hippo gets used to the water and feels comfortable. Adult specimens even sleep underwater, not waking up when they rise to the surface, so they breathe without being distracted from their dreams and without swimming. Sounds weird. But hippos really do not know how to swim in the usual sense of the word. Rather, they walk underwater, pushing off to take a breath of air on the surface from time to time, and then sinking back to the bottom. Adult hippos move in the water at a speed of up to 5 miles per hour, stopping about once every 5 minutes. Can you imagine how far they can go? Listen, Steve, why do we need this boat? What they do looks more like an underwater gallop. After all, why should they swim if they're heavy and their bone density combined with the streamlined shape of their bodies allows them to reach an ideal speed? And then there are elephants. Elephants who are much heavier than hippos, but at the same time are perfectly capable of swimming. Moreover, they use their trunks as breathing tubes and can cross up to 31 miles swimming. Scientists even suggest that the great-great relatives of modern elephants had an aquatic origin, and their trunks had developed specifically so that it would be easier for them to swim. Maybe trunks also used to act as periscopes long ago. What? I wouldn't be particularly surprised. What a twist! Who knows, maybe elephants had simply forgotten how to use their trunks as successfully as they had used to before because no one had taught them. Even nowadays, baby elephants need help and time to figure out how these strange things on their faces work. Ah, I have a snake on my face, a snake on my face! For the fifth time, it's a trunk. Oh, right. What if one day some elephant will forget to teach its offspring how to use the trunk and we'll see a new step of evolution? Listen, this is fun, of course, but don't you think it's a bit too much? Animals that don't know how to use their own body parts? Maybe they haven't figured out how their skin works during all the years of evolution as well. You know what? That's right. If we're talking about baby animals at least, for example, adult hippos know perfectly well that nature has given them really, really thick skin. Its thickness reaches two inches, but at the same time, it's sensitive to sunlight. To protect themselves from burns, they have to use their own secretions and dirt, just like elephants. You probably remember this trick if you watched my other videos. It's a good thing that dirt's not a popular sunscreen and stores couldn't just run out of it. But the knowledge of dirt equals protection from the sun is not written in the DNA of the animals. To learn how to take care of themselves, baby hippos have to carefully observe the behavior of adult specimens. You know, a typical animal school. Look at some grown-up and repeat after them. However, grown-ups don't always teach something good or even useful. Moreover, sometimes they're not even of your species. Take parrots that learned to swear and scared the zoo staff, for example. Seems like I'm starting to guess who they have to thank for that particular skill. English, mother do you speak it? Animals that haven't managed to learn the most basic survival skills are doomed to die. Does it mean that if there's no good role model nearby, we can say goodbye to the baby? Most likely. But sometimes people come to the rescue. People and fake wild animals. Just look at these constructions. I especially like the elephant at the watering hole. Seriously, it looks so real. Hi. <laughs> In the absolute majority of cases, parents are the ones teaching the younger generation, most often mothers. Only the banded mongoose went further and invented schools. 
Well, it's more like a tutor, because each of their pups has a mentor. A real mentor, like Nicolas Cage in a funny hat. An adult mongoose, not related to the pup, feeds, cares for, and educates the baby, teaching it everything they know themselves. Most often, mentors are males who do everything so that the little mongoose would become independent members of the group. It sounds like the perfect education system, but you know, mentors can be different. You have to clean the house and help your parents. Go to the bathroom and don't flush after yourself. As I've already said, an animal that had no one to learn from is probably going to die. Yes, instincts are a huge help, but the more complex the body, the less their influence. That is, a young leopard would certainly crave hunting. But what if they never tried to catch prey before? <sighs> it looked much smaller from a distance. If social advertising existed in the world of wild cats, it would look something like this. However, most cubs don't need any extra motivation. They're already willing to learn. Their mothers do everything to help. However, it's impossible to build a fake prey with lion's paws, so the females catch real animals. Some calf that wouldn't be able to escape from the adult lionesses could become such a training tool. Each time the prey escapes from the lion cub, it gets caught again. And the lesson continues. Cruel? Well, it is nature. Someone will have to die in the end. Lion cubs are also in danger. The title of king of animals wouldn't help them. Any cub is a treat for another predator. It's unlikely that crocodiles have watched the Lion King and the lioness understands that perfectly well. Her task is not only to protect her offspring from danger, but also to explain to it that it is dangerous to come close to the water. Perhaps seeing water equals danger written down would work better, but you have to improvise when you have paws. No, don't go to the water. Don't go. I'm telling you. What else could a young lion need in the future? The ability to climb trees? Usually other big cats do that, but knowing how to climb higher is always an advantage. There are many theories why lions do it at all. For example, if they're in a tree, they wouldn't be trampled by some antelopes. You remember what happened to Mufasa? Exactly. While sitting on a branch, they could avoid touching the wet grass, cool down, observe the surroundings, and don't forget about the flies. If you've ever been somewhere with a lot of annoying insects, then you can imagine how unbearable it is when they get into your face. The higher you are, the stronger the wind, which means that there are more chances of getting rid of the flies. A really useful life hack. But let's be honest, lions aren't leopards. They can't be called masters of climbing trees. When it's time to go down, lions often look like they regret having climbed up in the first place. Majestic adult lions become clumsy and slow, like kittens. Sometimes they try to go down head first, and sometimes the opposite is true. No wonder that their every movement is like a slight panic. Should I put my paw here or here? Damn, why is the branch crunching? Damn, damn, damn! Some lions just fall to the ground while trying to get down from a tree. And that's absolutely not something they should put in their resumes when applying for a formidable predator position. And then I thought, wait, lions act like ordinary domestic cats. The latter also have no problem climbing up, the higher the better. But as for going down, why does that happen at all? Shouldn't skills work equally on the way up and down? Bears, for example, do not have such problems, although they do not look like agile, graceful animals at all. What the hell, nature? Nature does have an answer to that. Cats are simply made to climb up and not down. Their retractable claws are curved, and their hind legs are stronger than their front ones, which makes cats agile climbers. But these same features turn into problems when it's time to go down. The cat's instincts say that they need to move their head forward, physiology makes it impossible, and as a result, we get pets stuck in trees, screaming all over the area. When someone tells you that everything in nature is perfectly thought through, tell them about cats. See you later.